morning and welcome to 2024. I'm Brendan Rendo with the Homes in Orlando team. Uh, unfortunately, Joe uh, isn't able to join us for the first episode of the year. Uh, first off, we'd like to start. Wish everybody Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a fantastic holiday season. And now it's time to jump back in and get ready for 2024 and what that has to hold. And again, we are the Orlando Real Estate Buzz, and we come to you every Thursday morning, bringing you the economic news, the real estate news, everything that's going to affect the housing market. And for this year, I think everything comes down to one thing and one thing only. And what is that? Affordability. Plain and simple, affordability because that has become the biggest problem for everyone with housing right now. To get into a, a new home uh, between the down payment, the closing costs, the monthly payment, even with interest rates coming down, affordability is still very hard for a lot of people. And it's actually become much more expensive to own a home than it, do, than it is to, to rent. So that's, that's one of the things that we've really got to take a look at. And right before the new year, uh, Redfin put out a, uh, an interesting release of information about what percentage of homes are actually affordable based on the median income. And you can see over the years, you know, we've averaged 50%, you know, 2021 dropped down to about 39%. That's a good inventory of homes that are available for the person with a median income. But as of 2023, with the incredible price increases we've seen from the pandemic area era, that only about 16% of homes are actually affordable for the, for the median income family. And what does that really kind of mean? Well, everyone's wondering why home prices haven't really taken a dip. Well, reason is, is if you've only got 16% of the homes affordable for the median income, it makes that competition more fierce and it's going to hold the prices up or possibly continue to even increase the prices overall. And Unusual Wales also put out a very interesting, this was from uh, Moody's economist, Mark Zandi. And I found this very interesting. He stated that the mortgage rate has to fall to 5.5% or the median price of a home has to fall 22% or the median income has to increase by 28% for housing to become affordable again those are huge jumps in all directions. We're sitting right now roughly about 6.7%. So we need to have another full point, a little over a point drop to make housing affordable again for people. Or the prices have to fall 22%. Or the median income has to increase 28. Well, I don't see the median income increasing 28%. Um, incomes just have never grown at the same pace as everything else so that price decrease is the one that you're kind of looking at going that may be the one will it be 22 percent i don't think 22 percent, but i think going into this year i think we're going to see prices stay steady but in the new housing new homes area i think we may we're going to continue to see the type of incentives that we've been seeing um, over the past really three to four months. Um, again, we get them consistently on a daily basis. You know, we'll, as a realtor, they're offering bonuses for us to bring people in, or they're offering, um, I saw one from Coulter Homes for properties, I believe it was in Kissimmee, up to $150,000 in incentives. And Taylor Morrison again this morning, sending out their latest price cuts on all their inventory homes. So you're seeing that market softening overall. 
and continue to soften. And when you look at the predictions that we have coming up for the number of sales that are going to be happening for this year, most people are projecting mm, about 4.5, somewhere in that somewhere in that area. Um, but you can see that the pending home sales have just continually decreased. And we're actually down below levels before 2009 currently. So you look at those numbers and again, it all comes back to that affordability. When you're working with people and you've got to sit down and go through the numbers with them and you're seeing that pretty much everyone is, is their debt to income ratios simply because they have a simple car payment or they may have one credit card. And with the housing payment, now their their debt to in, total debt to income ratio, which really can't go over 50% for most lo loan formats, is sitting close to 42, 43, 44%. When you look back at the Great Recession, and at that time, we peaked at roughly about 30%, 36% when it came to debt to income ratio. So people are being stretched thinner and thinner and thinner. And then when you look at inflation with the cost of food, uh, the cost of energy, um, the cost of home insurance, it's making it extremely difficult for the, the middle income, median income family to actually be able to afford a home. And where do we, and looking, looking forward into this year, you're seeing that softening, but I think, again, too many people have gotten ahead of their skis. Uh, when you look at the last Fed meeting minutes, they said that they felt that they would keep the rate higher. They, yes, they may do three rate reductions into the, uh, into the coming year, but at the same time, a lot of people are saying six cuts, seven cuts, I don't see it. Is the economy softening? Yes. We've actually had announcements of a number of layoffs in Central Florida coming up for 2023. So, and it was a it was a lot of them. So the economy, the labor market's still tight. It's softening. Um, if that continues to soften, I think we'll we'll see the price cuts are the rate reductions that the Fed has talked about. Right now, I'm kind of 50-50 on March. I'm not sure. I think they may want to let it go into May before they actually do the price cut. So we'll see how that, how that plays forward. But right now, for 2024, it's affordability. Is how do we make housing affordable again for people? Because the people with the two and a half percent, three percent, you know, three and a half percent mortgage rates, they don't want to sell. They don't want to sell because they're locked in. They've got a great rate, and they would much rather do some renovations to their homes than go into a six and a half percent or seven percent, depending on points, um, mortgage. They don't want to do it. So our inventories. Even though it's gone up, it's it's not at that level where where it, it's it's forcing prices down quite yet. So let's look at our. Sorry about that. Excuse me one second. I lost my. Just wanted to get into the Orlando numbers here. First show of the year. A little technical difficulty. But getting into. Um, Let's break into the numbers, see how the how the year ended for Orlando. So our sales surprisingly actually decreased in that final week of the year. We dropped to 321 sales. Uh, our inventory decreased 136, which kind of makes sense. Um, you saw the final couple of weeks, you know, with the holidays and everything, everything, people don't want to put their house on the market. So that's that's very typical. But I think what we'll do is probably this the next two to three weeks is you'll see inventory pick back up a little bit 
um, simply because we're through the holidays, people just getting back to work, and they're going to start looking at putting homes on the market. Our condos, again, dropped to 105. That market is just flat, extremely, extremely flat. Their inventory did decrease a little bit by 93. And one of the numbers, of course, we look at every week, which is the original list to sales price. You see that we're still sitting at that 94.6%. So about a 5% negotiation room for, for buyers right now. And if that inventory level over the next month few months continues to increase, I think we'll see that also continue to increase. And you'll see, you know, here in the main in the main bread and butter market, which is the 300 to 400,000, that the original list, the final list um, is sitting about $18,000 or 95%. So there's some there's some major discounts that are happening. Our days on market is holding steady at 49. And you see our weekly sales. This was interesting. I, I, I saw this this morning. I found this one interesting. Is you look back into August and we had 515 sales that week. And it was pretty steady in that 450 to 500 range previous to this. But then you see we just started to continually drop down and we are down to 300, you know, pretty good average of 400 in that ballpark. And then you see our inventory, we actually ended up with about 14% more inventory than we started the year with after, I think we were down about 20% in March and April. Um, the inventory recovered greatly for everyone. And we went from beginning of the year, roughly about 20 days on the market. We've actually more than doubled the days on the market from the beginning of the year. Then we get into the condo sales. Same thing is you just see a steady, slow amount of condo sales going on. And that, that again is because of the changes in the, uh, in the insurance that's being required with condos. So I expect that to continue. Uh, you're starting to see prices fall in the condo market. You're starting to see some price, bigger price decreases. It's a tough market because the HOA fees have gone up and the prices have gone up, but now it's, it's well, honestly purchasing a condo, which a lot of people did, you know, retirement, um, so they don't have to do the maintenance it's actually become more expensive to own the condo than it, than it is to own a small house. So those are our numbers for the week. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to a fantastic 2024. Take care and be blessed.